thank you for tuning into the OSCE Station Web Lectures. Today we'll be discussing how to take a cardiovascular history. Hopefully by the end of the session you'll be able to elicit a comprehensive history whilst obtaining personal information and distinguishing between different differentials and how they present. So let's start off with a general formula. Every history comprises of these seven sections, not necessarily in this order. A clear, polite introduction sets the scene for the consultation. Then the doctor must explore in detail the reason the patient sought help. The patient's background should be investigated as this is often directs the diagnoses. And finally, one could argue most importantly, the doctor must ice the patient. Find out what the patient seeks out of this interaction, taking into consideration the patient holistically and ensuring patient satisfaction. A good introduction is key. It sets the tone and the mood for the consultation, putting the patient at ease and making them more likely to be forthcoming. A useful mnemonic to remember is WIPER. W. With each new consultation, make sure you wash your hands and ensure all equipment is clean. This is for both you and the patient's benefit. I. Introduce yourself. State your full name and that you are a medical student. Before you ask any questions, it's essential that you've got the right patient. So you must ask the P. Patient details, including their full name and their date of birth. E. Explain the purpose of the interaction so that they are aware of what's going on and can give you informed consent. You must always ask the patient's permission and respect their decision if they choose to decline. You must also make clear to them that declining will not affect their care in any way. Finally, R. Reposition. You want to ensure that you are able to establish a good patient rapport. So make sure the environment, i.e. both you, the patient, and the furniture are in an optimal position. Okay, so let's begin with why the patient has come in, the presenting complaint. This is part of the history that's arguably the most crucial. Here you'll gather vast amounts of information that will tell you the diagnosis if done correctly. Let the patient talk. He or she will tell you what's wrong. They'll put emphasis on what's distressing them. Remember to look at them holistically and address the issues that are impacting them the most, whether it's a physical symptom or a psychosocial one. Either way, we need to make sure the patient leaves feeling like they've been listened to and their concerns addressed. So start off by asking open questions, such as, what can I do for you today? Leave a minute or so for the patient to talk without interrupting or leading them. This is a skill that develops over time. There may be follow-up questions that you want to ask, but hold on to them for later. If you find your patient doesn't say that much, prompt them with cues such as, tell me more about that. Again, an open question that nudges them to divulge a bit more information. Once their minute or so is up, we can now jump into finding out what we want to know. I think Socrates is a great mnemonic to remember when wanting to probe about the presenting complaint. S. Sight. O. So onset. So when it started, was it gradual or was it sudden? The character of the complaint. If it continued of its intermittent radiation, does it move anywhere? Association. Are there any accompanying symptoms such as fevers? Timing. Is there a pattern to which symptoms come on? How long do they last for? Have you had them in the past? Exacerbating or relieving factors. Does anything make it better or worse? Does it improve or fluctuate? And finally, assess the severity by asking the patients to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. Obviously, some parts may or may not be relevant, so use this with caution. If the patient is complaining of shortness of breath, you weren't going to ask where the site of the shortness of breath is, but if they complain of pain, you most definitely will. 
The best clinicians are able to tailor every history to the patient depending on what is appropriate and relevant. Don't worry if you haven't sussed it out yet. It comes with practice. Moving on. A focused history is a great way to pick up on symptoms the patient may have been experiencing but doesn't think is that important or may have just forgotten about. So, for a cardiovascular history, you concentrate on cardiovascular symptoms. You may want to touch on other systems, if time permits, whilst doing your systematic review. Let's talk about some cardiac symptoms that one should ask about. I always imagine a person and work from head to toes to ensure I don't miss anything out, because it's really easy to do. Find a logical method that works for you. The ones I've heard on my man are the ones I believe to be important. Let's start off the top with syncope. Heart defects can present like this. Then we have dyspnea. This is essentially shortness of breath. A common complaint in patients who have heart failure, palpitations, chest pains. There are lots of patients with angina, edema and systemic symptoms are always important to check just so we don't miss out things like cancer. If you're super savvy, you can ask patients for risk factors associated with cardiovascular disease, such as hypertension and smoking. A full systems review is somewhat unrealistic, considering the short amount of time you have with patients, and it's not great to bombard them with 101 questions. So make sure you have, again, in your head a little man and work your way through asking about relevant symptoms that could be applicable depending on the presenting complaint. For example, if a patient comes in with chest pain and I think it's cardiac in origin, I'll still ask about cough and reflux as they could lead to other differentials. Keep an open mind and don't narrow your line of questioning too early on. I'm not going to go through each and every symptom on the screen in fear of boring you to death. But it's here as a reference that you can look back on or pause the video when and as you'd like. So we've got an idea of what the patient's here for and what the problem may be. But we need some background information. So that's where our pathological history, family history and social history come to play. This not only directs our differentials but allows us to appreciate the patient as a person with other needs and not just their symptoms. So we'll start off with their past medical history, asking if they have any current conditions. A good way to find this out is to ask them what medication they're on, if any at all, as most patients don't think they have any ongoing problems as they no longer experience any symptoms. Here's a list of conditions and medications that are common in patients with cardiovascular problems. Although they are not exclusive to them, nor is it necessary to have any. It's also important to ask if they've been to hospital before, whether it's due to an emergency or a planned surgery. This gives us an idea of the patient's health in general. It's also important to see how these different conditions interact with each other. Make sure you ask about medication, their compliance and appropriate usage. Don't forget to document any allergies such as penicillin and what happens to them when they take it. We then move on to family history. Ask about any general conditions that might run in the immediate family, so their parents or siblings, such as diabetes or cancer. And then move on to ask them about cardiospecific questions, such as an unexplained death at a young age, which could reveal long QT syndrome. You have to use your judgement here on how important it is to get an extensive family history as it may or may not be relevant to the patient's presenting complaint. And finally, a social history. A very important part of the history from both a holistic care point of view and it also reveals clues about the patient on what they might be suffering from. Always ask about smoking, drinking and recreational drugs. Make sure you quantify exactly how much and how often. So for smoking, find out how many cigarettes they smoke in a day. With alcohol, how many units they drink in a week. Patients tend not to know this. 
So rephrase by referring to glasses of wine or pints of beer, something that they can relate to. It's becoming more and more important to ask about diet and exercise now with the prevalence of obesity, especially in a cardio history. Ask patients to take you through a typical day, each meal time and snacks. If you feel like their lifestyle isn't optimal, you can advise them on how to live a healthier one, giving them some points of contact to help them reach their goal. For example, if you think your patient's a heavy smoker, advise them to cut down and eventually quit and point them to the right direction with leaflets and appropriate support groups. It's important not to get too bogged down with the presenting complaint and just treat that, but consider the patient as a whole and help them from all aspects of their life. Find out how things are at home and if they're getting along okay or if they need any extra support. How are they coping in general? Patients may reveal things that they're particularly concerned about, such as their job or how their conditions affecting their day-to-day -day life. As doctors, we should not forget to nurture patients from this point of view too. Throughout the consultation, one must not forget ICE, that is, ideas, concerns and expectations. Where appropriate, find out what the patient's thoughts are if they have any worries with regards to their symptoms and what they want to achieve from this consultation. We need to leave the patient feeling like they've been listened to and are satisfied. Summaries are a great way to clarify the information that you've gathered, check in that what you've understood is correct, and it allows the patient to correct you or expand if need be. Signposting is also a useful technique to give the consultation some direction and structure. Telling the patient what you've just covered and what you intend to. I just want to end this presentation on a few conditions and how they present. Just to give you an idea of what to look out for when taking a history. This isn't an exhaustive list, but a few salient ones that one should be able to recognise. So let's start off with the presenting complaint being a chest pain. So one differential could be an MI. This typically presents with a centralised crushing pain that radiates to the left arm and the neck. Or it could be angina. It's a pretty common complaint that worsens on exertion and is relieved by rest. Or it could be an aortic dissection that is a sudden onset pain that radiates to the back. Could even be pericarditis. This presents with a pleuritic chest pain that's relieved when sitting forward. Breathlessness is another common complaint. Again, an MI can present in this way. Or it could be heart failure, as this is a common cause for breathlessness. Common features include orthopnea and edema. Just to reiterate how important it is to communicate effectively. This truly makes a difference to the patient and their general experience. These are eight top tips that you should remember to improve communication. Use open questions, avoiding multiple or leading ones. Make summaries throughout the consultation and signposts where appropriate. Avoid using jargon and ensure you express your empathy throughout the consultation, either by the words you say or the behaviour you display. This concludes our talk on how to take a cardiovascular history. I hope you found this useful and will tune in to OSCE Station soon for more tutorials. Thank you for listening.